The Assistant Minister to the Treasurer, Michael Sukar, I spoke to him earlier and began by asking him what certainty there is now for those on the NDIS, given the whole point of the levy, as announced by Mr Morrison, the increase in the Medicare levy, was to give those individuals and their families certainty. Of course uh, we can give that certainty. I mean, when we announced this increase to the Medicare levy last year, uh, clearly, uh, based on the budget position, uh, the state of the economy, we felt uh, that uh, Labor's hole needed to be filled. Uh, pleasingly, uh, since that time, uh, based on a lot of hard work, a lot of tough decisions, uh, the economic management of the government plus its budget discipline uh, has meant now that, uh, as the Treasurer has said, uh, we can spare taxpayers uh, that increase in the Medicare levy. Uh, we can simultaneously assure uh, everybody uh, relying on the NDIS that with that strong economy uh, and that budget discipline which we've shown uh, over many years will continue to ensure uh, that uh, Labor's uh, NDIS hole uh, is filled uh, and uh, of course it's good news for the broader economy too. But there's not a funding stream, hypothecated funding stream for NDIS, you're just basically funding it from presumed economic growth. Well, Kieran, I mean, what we've seen uh, since uh, last year's budget has been uh, a lot of the decisions, quite difficult decisions uh, around spending uh, are starting to pay some dividends to the bottom line of the budget. We've also seen all of our pro-growth policies, including our small business tax cuts, uh, start to flow through to the bottom line through increased revenues uh, for the budget, which, uh, when you put them together, means uh, that we're able to uh, fill that hole in another means uh, and uh, again, uh, Kieran, uh, we think this is good news for taxpayers. Uh, we can still give comfort to those people uh, who are relying on the NDIS and may I add, um, uh, in looking back at uh, some of the decisions taken by the Howard government, uh, there's a very similar situation here which was the East Timor levy where uh, the government uh, at the time announced an increase or, or announced a levy to help fund our deployment uh, and peacekeeping activities in East Timor. Over the course of that year, as the budget improved, uh, as it turned out, that levy didn't proceed because the improving budget bottom line meant that uh, we were able to spare taxpayers that increased uh, tax burden. So a similar decision's been taken here, uh, where you've got tough decisions that have been taken on the budget, plus uh, our strong economic yeah. management flowing through to the bottom line. Uh, we can spare taxpayers uh, that increased tax, but also give certainty but that to those on the was, NDIS. That deployment wasn't indefinite. NDIS is. It's, an, it's a permanent scheme. So well, there, there, there is that key difference. What's well, well, your Kieran, message I mean, to I'm those just, just on the scheme? I'm, I'm just but what's your message to those on the scheme about certainty and support for this on an ongoing basis? Well, I can assure uh, everybody uh, relying on the NDIS that uh, provided we have governments, uh, as the Turnbull government under Treasurer Morrison, provided we have governments uh, who watch uh, every dollar that goes out, that can make difficult decisions, that has uh, very, very tight budget discipline and, of course, uh, pro-growth policies, uh, then as the economy grows and tax receipts to the government uh, improve, as they have uh, over the course of this year, uh, pleasingly, uh, much ahead of uh, where we'd budgeted for, uh, you can take these decisions without it having an adverse impact on services because, as we've always said, uh, yes, uh, we uh, believe in lower taxes, uh, but, of course, uh, we are committed and dedicated to ensuring that the government can fund uh, the services that we commit to and that Australians uh, expect from government. Philip Curry reports in the AFR about the government's tax cut plan across 10 years, starting slow, building up. Is that... Is that accurate? Is that your approach? Well, Kieran, uh, you'll have to wait for budget night. There's always a lot of speculation. Uh, I think there's no secret, uh, as foreshadowed by the Prime Minister late last year, that we're very keen uh, to give middle income earners particularly uh, more money uh, in their own pocket. Uh, the means and the way in which that's achieved, uh, sadly, we'll have to wait until budget night uh, before announcing. Well, how do you define middle income? Well, Kieran, again, you'll find out on budget night, uh, people will be very clear what we believe to be middle income uh, as far as those 
for whom we provide tax relief. But uh, let's just look at the current state of affairs. I mean, right now, uh, we have um, decided, taken the decision to not proceed with the increase in the Medicare levy from 2, and a, two to 2.5%. Two and the Labor Party, conversely, uh, who haven't hypothecated uh, their levy to the NDIS, uh, are looking to increase taxes on those with incomes of $87,000 uh, or more, uh, in addition to uh, the, uh, the budget repair levy, uh, so in effect the highest marginal rate of 49.5%. I can uh, say this with some confidence, Kieran, that uh, on budget night people will see uh, the government uh, with a plan, uh, with, a dedi with dedication to uh, lowering taxes uh, for everyone, but particularly for middle income earners mm -hmm. and the Labor Party who, with one succession of tax after another, just want to reach deeper and deeper uh, into Australians' pockets. But La Labor hasn't hypothecated a levy, now, nor has the government now. It's been one of your criticisms that Labor didn't fund it. Is the government now vulnerable to the same line of criticism? That there's no well, specific well, well, funding Kieran, stream? Labor, La Labor at the last election had uh, huge, much greater budget deficits as far as the eye can see, and that hasn't changed, notwithstanding the $200 billion of additional taxes on the retirees tax, the small business tax, the capital gains tax increases, the housing tax. Okay. Uh, six, notwithstanding those successions of taxes, Kieran, their budgets are bigger. So they cannot credibly claim to be able to fund uh, any uh, services, let alone the NDIS, uh, particularly given that they haven't hypothecated right. that. But uh, I think they're in a, a very, very naked position as far as tax goes. But just quickly before you go, did, did you call your Liberal counterparts socialists and termites in a speech a couple of years ago. It was reported in the Herald Sun this week. <laughs> well, Kieran, it's, uh, it's funny. Uh, it's funny. If you uh, come along to Liberal Party branch meetings, they're pretty colourful affairs. I think all Liberals agree we don't want uh, left-wing socialists in the Liberal Party, and we've done a very good job of keeping them out for the last 75 years, and I know that's something that all Liberals agree with me on. And, and there aren't any, I wouldn't have thought, in Victoria right now, are there? In terms no, of your Kieran, party? No, Kieran, we've done a very good job of keeping the socialists out, but okay. we've got to remain vigilant at all times.